Hi everybody and welcome to my next Wings of Fire tutorial featuring Queen Oasis and focusing on how to draw sand wings. Now, Queen Oasis is a bit of a weird subject. Why did I pick her specifically? You know, I could have picked Sunny or Kidley or any of the other Sandwing main characters. But some new information was just released, or rather leaked on Amazon, and that there's going to be a new Legends book, apparently, called Wings of Fire Legends Dragon Slayer. It's going to be told, I believe, from the point of view of Rose or Flower uh, and her two companions and how they managed to defeat Queen Oasis. You can find the link to the Dragon Slayers book on Amazon in the description, but I just wanted to share that really interesting new information that's kind of hot off the press, as you will. I don't think that this new Wings of Fire Legends book is being released until this December, although I'm not 100% sure. But either way, it's pretty cool and I look forward to seeing the Wings of Fire world through the eyes of scavengers. Anyway, that's why I'm drawing Queen Oasis today, and without further ado, let's get right into the tutorial. So per usual, I always start with drawing the circle, which is going to be the main part of the skull and main part of the head, and then I start drawing the snout outwards from it. Now, a lot of people like to draw sand wings with kind of very slender snouts, and I'll get into that a little bit later and talk about different snout types and different ways you can draw uh, your face structure. And I often draw more slender faces as well. But if you look at the canon artwork, Sandwings actually have a very blocky snout that's almost similar to uh, Mudwings. And their necks are kind of thick as well. Anyway, I'm going to bring up one of the official Sandwing pictures just to kind of show you guys how like the head shape, the snout relative to the head, the snout is actually pretty block-like in general. So that's why I've drawn my Sandwing here like that. But I understand that not everybody prefers that kind of thick snout cannon look. So I'm actually going to go over three different snout types that you can use for any Wings of Fire Dragon. But I thought it would be a good idea to talk about on the Sandwing video in particular, since I see a lot of people using different snout types for the Sandwing. As opposed to, say, the Mudwing, where usually Mudwings predominantly have blocky snouts. So the first style I like to call, quote, quote, the popular sleek style. And this is the style that you'll find if you go on Amino frequently. A lot of artists tend to kind of gravitate toward this style I notice nowadays, and it has a very kind of sleek and elegant look. So the shape of the face is almost going to be wolf-like in a way, and the eyes are going to be drawn very triangular. Um, with the shape of the snout, the nose is going to be usually jutting out farther than the chin, and everything is just going to be focused on sharp angles. There's going to be no chin paunch pretty much because the whole style is focused on being streamlined and not necessarily realistic, but more so stylized. Now the nose horn is going to be placed pretty much exactly on top of the uh, bridge of the nose and the mouth I noticed is usually very like almost shark like. So there's usually some sort of like kind of like tooth like ragged structure to the mouth. And then at the end of the mouth, there's kind of like a dark lot almost to show usually like some sort of emo scowl um, or just to show a resting mouth. The rest of the features tend to be pretty minimal so there's not really that much of a bony cheek to the sand wing and the spike um, doesn't jut out very much and as for the sail there's usually some cuts or nicks in it and then uh, sometimes even full breaks in the entire sail. I noticed that with this popular style, there's also usually like really thick horns that fit right into the base of the head uh, without any scales overlapping at the base. And then usually some sort of line to show the like, keratin of the horns and the structure of the horns. Now that I'm done drawing the popular style snout, I'm going to work on a canon style snout for you guys. So with the canon styles, I mentioned the uh, shape of the snout is very box-like. And the shape of the mouth is kind of just a curved line. There's no special like striations or tooth like lips or whatever that you have to make for it. It's pretty straightforward. I'm mostly following the reference. The uh, nose is flared, which is kind of unique to the sand wings. And the lower jaw is kind of pushed up towards the end of the mouth. The horns kind of curve upwards and they're rather small compared to the horns of other tribes. And there's also kind of a noticeable neck paunch uh, that shows kind of a large throat in the sand wings. I don't know, I guess maybe they swallow their prey whole or something. 
I also noticed that with Canon sand wings that the length of their sail, when you compare it to like the back of their neck to the top of the sail, it kind of tends to vary a lot, especially in the Canon artwork. Whereas in more like popular artwork or like the trend nowadays in Wings of Fire art is to draw the sail with like, it's very tall and straight with no variation in length. But yep, that's the Canon sketch. Lastly, I'd like to get to the style that I would guess I would call my style, the one that I've been using for all of the past tutorials. So in this tutorial, there's still a slightly blocky snout and still a few ridges along the mouth, but it's not quite as rectangular as in the Canon artwork. It's also not as slender and fox-like or wolf-like as in quote quote the popular style. However, of course I like to draw in the canon style from time to time and in the popular style because I think both are fun. The eye that I'm drawing is again sort of a mixture of the two styles. So it's more angular than in the canon style where the eye is very oval, but it's also not quite the triangle that you see in the popular style. I like to make my horns a bit larger because I think in the canon style the small horns look a little bit weird. And then I tend to follow the more popular style with the uh, the facial structure and the second horn near the ear, just because it looks a little less, I don't know, old womanish or like wrinkly or raggedy. I'm also thinning out the neck a bit, keeping a little bit of that neck paunch, but just making sure that the neck isn't quite so thick because I like that serpentine look. Anyway, these are the three finished styles. Style one, style two, canon style, and style three, which I'll call the popular sleek style. Which style do you guys think I'm going to use to finish the tutorial and continue? Well, you guys already saw in the intro picture, but you know that I'm a sucker for always going for the canon, so canon style it is. Let's do this. Thankfully, I already did most of the work for this sketch. All I have to do is just sketch in the underbelly and then sketch in the scales. For the scales, I'm going to use the same trick that I used in the ice ring tutorial which is that to make sure that the scales are all aligned and not kind of facing all in different directions when I sketch them, I'm going to make two lines that are going to tell me where the center of the point of the scales are going to be. And then that way I can make the kind of like triangle shapes of the scales very quickly and easily without having to worry so much about the placement or the alignment. Remember that sand wings actually have three rows of scales. They have one row that's right next to their belly, and it makes kind of a jagged edge so it connects with their belly. And then they have the second row of scales, which you can do overlapping with the first row of scales. And then their third row of scales is quite easy to draw. All you have to do is just make a line that goes from the second row of scales to the back of the neck where the spine is. And then all you have to do is just draw a little line uh, connecting each scale to make that sort of jagged back texture. Since it's Queen Oasis that I'm drawing, I'm gonna go ahead and give her the Eye of Onyx. I know that the eye is actually on a gold link chain, but here I'm just going to do a simple leather strap because honestly, it's way easier and faster to draw and you guys don't really need a tutorial on how to draw gold chains. Anyway, at this point, I've gone to the line art step. I'm just going to be following my sketch so I'm gonna go ahead and speed up the video. Have fun listening to this deserty, sandwingy music that I carefully picked out.
Okay, yay! Line art is done. If you want to figure out how I uh, did the coloring of my line art, you can go ahead and check out my icing tutorial video, but it's really just a simple trick of locking my line art layer and then going over it with a color brush. Honestly, I had a hard time picking out the colors for Queen Oasis because there's really no description of her in the book. I think she's described as large, which would make sense since she's an older queen. But other than that, it doesn't really say whether she favors, say, like, Blister's coloring with the uh, dark diamond markings, or Blaze's coloring, which is, I think, supposed to be light and paler, or Burns coloring, which I believe is described to be darker. So I honestly kind of went for something in the middle of all of them. So I did sort of a nondescript sandyish color uh, for her main scales, then paler underbelly, and I ended up going with darker colors for her frill or her sail, as you'll see a bit later. I do really hope that they go over more about what Oasis looks like in Dragon Slayer, so we can draw pictures of her in her queenly, awesome, ferocious glory. Speaking of the Dragon Slayer book, I really wonder who the main characters are going to be. I'm pretty sure that one of them is going to be Rose or Flower. Uh, to be confirmed that her real name is Rose in an interview. I think that she said that when Flower's trying to point at the flowers in the picture, she was actually pointing at Roses, trying to tell Smolder that her name was Rose. But Smolder misinterpreted as, of course, he doesn't know that humans call Roses Roses, so he thought her name was Flower. I'm pretty certain that the other main character, or one of the other three main characters, is definitely going to be... Flower's brother or sister, whoever is Holler's mother or father. Remember that Holler is the scavenger that Sunny found in the ruins, and Sunny managed to get some of the treasure from Holler, including one of the uh, dream visitors that Darkstalker made. Now we know that Tui confirmed in an interview that Holler is the daughter of the scavenger who actually managed to kill Queen Oasis, and we know that she's the niece of Flower, so therefore we know that it must be Flower's sister or brother who is the, the scavenger who killed Queen Oasis, and therefore that scavenger is going to most likely be a main character in the book. So we're going to have a brother and sister or sister and sister pair, which is going to be pretty cool as main characters. I suspect the book will be told in multiple points of view, kind of like Darkstalker Legends was, so that's going to be pretty interesting. As for the third main character, honestly, not sure who it's going to be since we've gotten no hints on that. My guess would be it's going to be Holler's other parent, so the significant other of Flower's sibling. Oof, okay. So now we're on to the Sandwing Eye, and I'm going to talk a little bit about this since Sandwing Eyes are canonically all black, which is sort of creepy and weird looking. Uh, but you can make them look kind of cool and beady. So if you look at Dog's Eyes, they're uh, iris is usually large enough that it fills the entire eye and it makes their eye look all black so you can kind of get that lighting from dogs eyes especially dogs who have dark eyes like Sheba's. The main thing is that you want to color, color the eye all black and then you want to have small reflective lighter spots like whitish areas near the bottom that show the reflection. Now a lot of people including myself like to give sand wings a black slera and Golden Iris, which is what I've done here to show you guys what it would look like on Queen Oasis if you did that. And it looks a little bit weird here, but normally you would shade around the top of the eye so it doesn't look as odd, but I'm going to change it back to the black eye because I like Oasis looking sort of creepy and sinister. I mean, she's so powerful and cool. When coloring the gold of jewelry or like gold markings on a dragon, uh, I actually prefer to use peachy tones as opposed to just gold tones for the base. Because I find that when you just use like yellowish tones, it makes the gold look kind of brassy almost. While if you use peach tones for a base and for shading, it gives the gold more of a luster. So I would actually prefer to use golden tones, almost like the peachy golden tones that I use for the back of Oasis's mane, except for lighter, because Oasis's mane slash frill slash sail, I keep on calling it different things. Um, it's a bit too dark to use for gold. Another neat trick that you can do after you do the shading and the base coat on the gold is if you have a program that does a luminosity layer or a shine layer, I think it's called on side two, or on Photoshop, you can use like color dodge. 
you can make a layer above the gold and you can kind of paint like glittery marks onto the gold and that's going to show kind of the luster and the shine and the brightness of the gold. And that's what I'm about to do right now. You can see the gold was a little bit drab until I decided to add this extra shininess. And you can replicate it by picking a very bright brush, bright yellow brush, but it's a lot easier if you use these special effect layers. But yep, that is pretty much everything. And I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Please give it a like or subscribe if you enjoyed it. And I look forward to seeing you guys in future tutorials.